So I was messing around with some different files and I wanted to kind of test the file sizes and workflows in a couple different applications and compare them somewhat side by side or you know actually side by side. Um, as you can see here I've got three file formats. I have a DGN file uh, produced by a microstation. I have a DWG file produced by AutoCAD Civil 3D. And I have a VCE file produced by Business Center, Trimble's Business Center Heavy Civil Edition. Now, this DGN file, just so you know, you can notice the size of it, it's about 11 megs. In this DGN file, there's 3D lines and points that are brought together that are basically of a five mile stretch of an interstate highway. Double uh, split medians, uh, interchanges, uh, a couple other uh, features, but it was a combination of some survey data, some LiDAR data, uh, traditional and GPS survey data. But basically at the end of the day, it's just 3D line work and points. And it was used to build, or it's being used to you know, build a surface model. Um, so the other part of this I want to show is the difference between the surface modeling and these applications. Uh, this drawing here is actually this line work imported into it. And when it's, as it's imported in, it uh, was then used to generate a surface. So you notice the file size becomes a whole lot smaller. It's at least half of the DGN file and it contains a surface object. Notice however when you get to Business Center that's even smaller. That's almost uh, you know half as again. So it splits it in half. This one also has a surface created by Business Center. So I just want to go through and show you that. Um, I'll show you the uh, if we just go to AutoCAD here. Here's the, the actual file um, that is the result of opening, uh, importing the DGN file and creating a surface inside of uh, Civil 3D. First thing you'll notice is that it does take a few seconds for uh, this project to load. But here's basically the end results. The line work, the points, the tin, the triangles, contours are all in this particular drawing. So if I was to take this and send it to back, you'll see that uh, there's all the line work they came from the DGN file used to build this surface. And if I open up in uh, Business Center, if we open up this road, same same drawings, the, we have same data sets. Uh, you'll notice a couple things. Um, again, it's you know, it takes a few seconds for it to open up and display the information. So again, I started both applications from scratch, opened up the drawing in the project. This one here as well has the data, has the tin, has the contours. This one had a 3D view, so you know that's probably why it took a little bit of extra time for it to uh, to open. Um, but we'll show you that here, and we'll show you what these flags are uh, in a second. Okay, so zoom around, we can see we've got some issues here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really start from scratch. I'm just go back to AutoCAD and we'll go through the AutoCAD process first and we'll do that simply by starting a new project or a new drawing we're going to use the typical standard Imperial template it's in Civil 3D we'll open it up now I'm sure there's you're, I know there's ways that I can reduce the data get even smaller I can purge and try to find duplicates but in most cases you, you know this is the process that you're going to see so what I'm going to do is I can actually go open I could have gone new um, or then gone open first, but I'm going to open, and here you can see I'm importing the DGN file. So I'm going to navigate out to where that file is stored on my machine here. So let's just go down to the project comparison, and I will pick the DGN file. So this is the DGN file. Um, I don't have MicroStation, so I can't really create this in MicroStation or show you how the surface would be built with GeoPacker inroads. Um, here, I'm not going to worry about this. I'm just going to map it the way it is. I don't don't really care about the layering scheme because I'm going to use all the data that's here. So it comes in. I do a zoom extents, and now you can see that I've got 3D lines. I've got points. So that is a if I right click and look at the properties of it, you'll see that it's a point. Uh, it's just a regular AutoCAD point. And then these here are either lines or um, 3D polylines. Okay, so there's a, a 3D polyline in this case here. If I look at that and we go to properties, you'll see that it's actually a spline. Okay, 
So what I need to do is I need to take these guys and I need to create a surface out of that information. So I'm going to do that simply by going over to surfaces on the tool space. We'll right click, we'll create a surface. You'll pick the surface style. So here I got to come in and choose my style. So I'll pick contours and triangles and we'll click OK. Now that I have that surface, I have to add the data to that surface. So I have to come down here and expand on definition. We'll add the break lines first. So I'll come up, we'll call them standard break lines. And I'll just put in break in here. Um, we can supplement and add a mid or distance for any arcs. I don't think there's any arcs the way this was created. So I'm just going to do a window around all of this. We will right click and we will get a whole bunch of event errors and duplicate information you know that we can zoom to and try to figure out what's going on so you can see we've got some issues that were ignored they are duplicates if we scroll down there's some crossing break lines there's a handful of that and we can zoom to that and we can try to figure out what that issue is okay I'm not gonna worry about that right now let's go back up and what I will do here is now we need to add in the drawing objects and I can add those and I gotta add the points so even if I did lines, you notice there's no polylines or splines. So if I do points, I still have to do this in two steps. I have to grab the line work first. I have to come back in here and do the points. And then this will give me my, my surface information. I got more errors that I would have to look at. And then I could come in here and I can you know, try to resolve these errors. Um, I could zoom to them, try to figure out what the break line is, what issue it is. I can flip this to 3D. Uh, I can also split this into uh, two viewports. So if I was to come down here and let's go to vertical, I could take this one and split it into two. Okay. Um, I can then also come in and orbit this guy around to get it to look, and then you know maybe zoom in. Notice the. little bit of lag there all right so I can come in here and I can zoom in take a look at it if I want to change the way this looks um, then I would have to uh, pick on the surface and actually change the surface style by going to the surface properties so if I was to go to surface properties or edit surface style under display I can change it between model or plan so in plan if I don't want to see the triangles we can turn those off and in 3D view in the model view I can keep them on All right, so you do have that, that functionality now I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to switch gears just go over to business center and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project I'm going to use typical US survey feet it's going to create a new project in this case I'm just going to come out here and I'm just going to take this DGN file and I'm going to drag and drop it in going to go in it's going to process the data don't care about the warning and there's all my there's all my data same information that I showed in the AutoCAD Civil 3D now I'm just going to go to surface I'm going to create a surface we're going to call this existing ground we can classify it as original and then we're going to come out here and we are going to just window and select every Remember all the data. We will click OK. And now I have a surface inside of Business Center. You'll notice there's some flags, so I can zoom to those flags. Um, I can open up a 3D view, and just like I did in Civil 3D. And we can split them. And, and this one here I can quickly easily pan and zoom around I can come in and look at what that error is so these flags are nice because I can identify what those errors are simply by zooming in and seeing that I've got a CAD line here that is crossing that line uh, over there so you know I could simply easily come in here and edit this CAD line and move it to a, a new location or maybe it should be over here and so if I do that 
I can come in and move it over there and then that will get rid of the flag um, in my uh, my drawing maybe I didn't uh, doesn't look like I grabbed the right spot uh, looks like there's another line yeah so there's another line there that's affecting my uh, my surface so I can break this line or edit the line and move it you know so that they don't um, so that they don't cross all right so maybe that's a snap to that line actually and we'll just go nearest here and there that gets rid of the flag so again I, you know I kind of picked the spot but um, and that was my new uh, error there maybe that line is not needed okay there's a lot of different ways to edit and we won't get into that right now we basically just want to show you the steps and how quickly I can create a surface inside of uh, Business Center from the same data that I had, you know, as a DGEN file in different applications. And then again, comparing the size, if I save this, um, you know, if I save it, it's going to give me the file size, and that file size is going to tell me, you know, what I showed you earlier. Um, it may not be the exact what I showed you because I did a uh, little bit of cleanup did a couple different things so let's just take a look at this from raw let's go to um let's go project data here and we will uh, go to project comparison and we'll call this i-64 dc save that one we'll go over to civil 3d um oh Let's make sure it's the same. I don't. I need to make my contour. So that's the only thing I need to do. I would come in here and create some contours. And let's set the interval to two. Index contour being ten, so it's the exact same. And we'll click OK. So I've got contours in there, and we'll save that file. If I come back over here, I got the same thing, same displays. And if I was to come in and save this. We'll save it in the same spot. Scroll down here. Project data. Project person. We'll call it i-64 dash dmg. There's no ESK. We'll save that. Now let's go out and take a look. And we can see here. My drawing, 4 megs. My business center file, 2.7. So again, if I clean it up, do a little bit more cleanup, I could probably reduce these guys down. Um, but still, the business center is half of the Autodesk one. Steps are fairly similar. You can do the same stuff in each one. Uh, big differences is what I've shown you here in business center. And what I showed you in Civil 3D is, what I showed you in Civil 3D is, you have to have Civil 3D, which is about a, Depending on if you rent it, lease, you know, uh, you can. There's renting options, different things, but I think yeah, I went and did a quick Google search, and it's around sixty-five. And it, let's just say six thousand dollars to get Business Center to do what I just, or to get Autodesk Civil 3D to do what I just showed you. With Business Center, I can do the same thing, and this what I showed you here costs absolutely nothing. You can core module uh, from Trimble, and there's absolutely nothing uh, there's no cost to do what I did to do what I just showed you here now you do if you want other features like some of the cleanup features you do have to purchase the modules for that but comparing these as closely as possible apples to apples um, I can achieve a, a lot more a lot faster for no cost versus a expensive uh, software application